In this video, we're going to talk about the scientific concept of work. So what, what you think of when you hear the word work in everyday life is that you're doing a job of some sort, right? You're doing some sort of labor. But in science, we have a little more specific definition for what is and is not work in the scientific sense. So our definition that we're going to use here is that work occurs when a force acts over a certain distance in the same plane as an object's motion. All right, so in order for work to be done in the scientific sense of the word work, we need two things to happen. We need there to be a force acting on a certain object, and we also need there to be motion. We need some distance to be covered. All right, so we need motion and we need a force. If a force acts on an object and it doesn't move, then there's no work done. If a force acts on an object and it moves, then work could possibly be done. Well, work would be done. But in, in the sense of the scientific definition of work, we need two things. We need the force and the distance to both be present. All right, so if, I, if an object moves and is moving on its own without a force acting on it, like let's think of a baseball that's thrown by a pitcher, while the baseball is being thrown, if we ignore air resistance and gravity, we would say that no work would be done on the object because if there's no force acting on it, then there's no work done. So if we throw a baseball that in, a, in a place where there was no gravity and there was no air resistance and it was just the ball flying without any forces acting on it, there would not be any work done on the ball because you need a force to act in order to have work done. So the other thing we have here is that the work needs to be in the same plane as the object's motion. So if a force acts perpendicular, so remember from math class, perpendicular right means something that meets at a right angle like this. So if the force is perpendicular to the object's motion, no work is going to be done. So if we look at this case, if we have, let's say, the force acting upwards like this and the object's motion to the right like this, this there will be no work done in this case because the force is acting perpendicular to the motion. All right, so in order for work to be done, we need a force to act over a certain distance and it has to have some part of it in the same plane as the motion. So if we take a box and we put a force on it, let's say a force to the right, an applied force here, and then we push the object and it, and it in fact moves to the right. In this case, work would be done because we have the force and the motion in the same plane. They're both going to the right. All right, but let's say we have this box on the floor and we think about what other forces would be acting on the box. Well, we've talked about gravitational force, right? Gravitational force would be acting downwards on the box. We've talked about uh, normal force or the force of a, a surface pushing back on an object. So we could say normal force here. Both of these forces, if we think about them, would they be doing work here? If you want to pause the video and maybe think about this on your own for a sec, uh, so the answer would be that no work is being done by gravity in this case because gravity is perpendicular to the object's motion. We could draw a little right angle here, right? The motion is to the right, gravity is straight down, those are perpendicular to each other. In that case, no work is done, right? If we have objects, let's say we have a box that's sliding across the floor like this, And then we have uh, the force of friction. Let's say this is a frictional surface. Let's say the force of friction is acting on this box as it slides across the floor. Would work be done by friction? The answer is yes, because the frictional force and the motion are in the same plane. They're not in the same direction, but they're in the same plane. We could draw a little plane here, right? And they're, they're, they're in the same plane. All right, so if the force and the motion are in the same plane, then work is going to be done. All right, so in the same case here, we could draw the gravitational force, right? Gravity would still not do work here because it's at a right angle with the motion of the object, All right? So if we look at this last example down here, would this force be doing work on the object? All right, so I want you to pause the video right now and see if you can come up with an answer uh, as to whether or not you think this force here would be doing work on this object given the, the motion represented by the blue arrow. All right, so pause the video right now, think about that, and start it up again when you're ready to see the answer. All right, so the answer to this question is yes, work is being done. If we were to describe the motion of this blue, er, that this blue arrow represents here, we would say that motion is to the right, 
right? So the, the motion of the object is to the right, straight across whatever floor we've got down here. And then if we were to describe this force here, what, what, what words would we use to describe this force? Well, we would say it goes up and to the right, right? So if we notice here, there's something in common. Both of these, the force and the motion, both have a dimension that's to the right, right? So because they both have a dimension to the right, part of this force is pushing upwards and part of it is pushing to the right. The motion is to the right. So we, both, we, we have both the force and the motion acting in a plane, a horizontal plane to the right, at least partially, right? So by our definitions up here, we said a force is perpendicular to an object's motion will not do work. Well, we could look at this angle here. It's very clearly not perpendicular, right? If we were to have a perpendicular force, it would have to be up like this to make a right angle with this motion, right? So because these forces, this force is not perpendicular to the motion of the object, it does work. So next we could think about here the idea of positive and negative work. So I had mentioned before uh, friction, doing work on an object even if the motion was in the opposite direction. So the way it works is we can define work as either being positive or negative based on what it does to an object's motion. So to simplify a real simple definition here for our purposes, we'll say that positive work occurs when the force is helping the motion of the object. So in the case where we had a box along the floor and we pushed it to the right with a force and the motion was to the right as well, in this case, the force that we put on the object was doing positive work because the motion of the object was helped by whatever force we were putting on it. All right, so positive work is if the force helps the motion. Negative work occurs when the force is opposing the motion or, or hurting the motion of the object. If the object is trying to move to the right, then a force that's to the left, if we said there's some force here, let's, let's say that we have friction here. If we have this, this little floor down here that's a frictional surface, the force of friction here would do negative work because as this object moves to the right, the force of friction here is opposing the motion of the object. So any force that opposes motion is going to do negative work. All right, so the easiest way to define this, positive work helps the motion, negative work opposes or hurts the motion. All right, so in the examples, if, if we have a force that's in the same direction as the motion, we can always tell that that's going to be positive work. So if we think of an object maybe in free fall, if an object is falling downwards, we could say that what, what type of uh, work would gravity be doing on the object? Well, if the object is falling downwards and gravitational force always goes downwards towards the center of the Earth, then gravitational force would be doing positive work here because it is in the same direction as the motion of the object. All right, so positive work helps the motion, negative work opposes the motion of the object. So. Uh, pause the video and think about this question that I've posed here. What type of force have we talked about in the last unit on forces that will always do negative work no matter what? So we've already eliminated one of those. In the last example, I said gravity was doing positive work, so obviously it's not gravity. What, what other forces have we talked about that, that would always do negative work? All right, so pause the video now. I'll give you the answer when you come back. All right, the answer to this question is friction. Because friction always opposes motion. So if we said negative work is going to be something that opposes the motion of the object, negative work always opposes the motion of the object. In that case, because friction always opposes motion, it's going to do negative work all the time. All right? So friction always does negative work in, based, based on the definition that, that we're going to use. So let's practice here. If we have an example, a little tug of war example here between the guy in the red shirt and the guy in the blue shirt, which of them is going to do work? If, if we assume that the boys move to the right as they're doing their tug of war, if they move to the right in our picture, which of them does work? Do both of them do work? Neither of them do work? If they are doing work, is it positive, negative, or zero? All right, so based on what you've learned so far, try this out on your own, pause the video, and come back in a sec for the answer. Right. So the answer to this would be they both do work. If we think about this, if we think of the rope as the little tug of war object here, what forces would be acting on the rope? Well, we have the blue guy 
who's pulling to the left here, all right, with his force, we'll say force to the blue guy, and we have the red guy over here pulling to the right. So you can say this would be the force from the red guy. And this is our direction of motion to the right. All right, so because there is motion and a force acting by both of these people, they're both going to do work. Those are the two things that we need to have work happen. We need a force and we need motion or a distance traveled. All right, so in this case, we have forces by both of the boys and motion, so they're both going to do work. So the next question is, is the work positive, negative, or zero? Well, we already said it's not zero work because they both did work. So if we think about this, is the, is the boy in the red shirt, is he helping or hurting the motion? Well, it's pretty clear here, right? His force is to the right. If the motion is to the right, he's helping the motion. So he would be doing positive work because his force helps the motion of the object. The blue guy over here, the motion is to the right. His force is acting to the left, so he would be doing negative work because his force is opposing the motion of the object. All right, so if a force helps the motion, it's positive. If a force hurts the motion, it's negative. So this guy in the red here is helping the motion because the motion's to the right, his force is in the same direction. The blue guy is opposing the motion because he's pulling in the opposite direction that the uh, rope is moving. All right, so positive work for the red guy, negative work for the blue guy. All right, so the last thing that we need to learn about for work is the formula. So work equals force times distance. So more work is going to be done if a stronger force is used and or if there's a greater distance traveled. All right, so the formula for this we could simplify as W equals FD. All right, so if we try some examples here, we're going to use the same process that we've used for all the other formulas we've learned this semester. We want to see in the word problem that we have, what can we pull out of it to plug into the formula. All right, so if a person pushes a cart up a hill using a force of 500 newtons, the box has pushed a distance of six meters, how much work was done? All right, so we have work is our unknown, we have force is 500 newtons, and we have the distance is six meters. So we know because we have W, F, and D involved as our variables, we can use the work equals force times distance formula. So W is our unknown, it's going to stay as a variable. We have the force, so that's going to get plugged in to the force spot in this equation. And we have the distance, which was six meters, that's going to go into the distance spot in the equation. So to solve this, all we have to do is multiply here. We have W solved for, it's already by itself, so all we have to do is multiply. We should end up with 3,000 newtons for this one. All right, the second question here. We have 600 joules of work being done. What distance must an object be moved by 150 newton force in order to have that much work be done? All right, so we have the work here is given as 600 joules. The distance is what we're looking for and it tells us that there's 150 newton force involved. So we can do the same process here. We can list out our variables. Here we have the work is 600 joules, the force is 150 newtons, and the distance is our unknown. So if we go to plug into the work equals force times distance formula, we're gonna have the work already as 600, the force is 150, and the distance covered is our unknown. Okay, so to solve for this, Again, if we want to find the distance, we need to get distance by itself. So we have to get rid of this 150 as our force. So to get rid of something, again, we do the opposite of what it's doing. The 150 is being multiplied here, so the opposite would be division. So we want to divide by 150 to get rid of it. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other. So we got to divide by 150 on both sides here. All right, so on the right side, we have 150 divided by 150 would give us one. Those will cancel out and then we're left with D by itself. So if we divide this out here, we would end up with four for the distance, and the units here would be in meters. All right, so the work equals force times distance formula, no different than any other formula we've used, really. It's a pretty straightforward formula. You just have to make sure that you're plugging everything into the right spot and solving for the right variable. All right, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.